All right. Welcome to week 11, guys. Um, I'm going to do the short video, talk about what we got going on this week. So basically, um, we are going to be starting our project four, which is a mix um, project. Since we're working remotely, we can't do stuff at the studio. So this is in place of that other project. So basically, um, this is the write up right here. Um, it's going to be in content of course but more or less you are downloading stems from a rock band recording session that took place last year um, at our studio at school the band I'm in called Hendershot um, anyway um, what I want you guys to do is do a you know full-on mix and master of uh, of these stems so basically I'm gonna walk you guys through the import of the stems building the session um, routing, doing some tracks um, for effects ends and submixing of groups of instruments. You're going to put in markers for the song form. You're going to put everything to a grid. Um, it was recorded with a click track, so everything should fit with the tempo markings. And you're going to do editing, processing, um, clean up stuff, um, apply effects and post production stuff, any pitch correction drum sample replacement, anything basically you are hearing and um, you think is going to improve the sound of this mix. So uh, depending on the DAW you're using, you might be um, doing Pro Tools. I'm going to use Pro Tools because that's what we've been doing lately. But uh, if you're doing some other DAW, go ahead and kind of the, follow the same processes for setting up routing and effects use and all that kind of stuff. So um, you can reach out to me individually if you're using um, a DAW that you might be new with and you want me to help you out with you know doing effects sends and returns or grouping tracks or using whatever plugins you have access to that are native to that DAW anyway um, you can use any DAW that's the basic thing and you can reach out and I can help you one-on-one -on -one through like a WebEx screenshot recording thing and we can um, I can help you with uh, using your DAW to, uh, to fulfill this assignment so requirements all that kind of stuff should be sitting here um, I'm gonna walk you through the download and setup of it initially um, this is maybe a little redundant but I'll make the video regardless um, and walk you guys through it so um, first off let me switch over to the DAW we're gonna go to D2L here first um, let me open up D2L page um, going to our home page for our class under course materials in content <clears throat> under project four you're going to be able to find the compressed um, collection of stems this also states the tempo marking so beats per minute um, also the uh, sample rate and bit depth is in the title of this track or the title of this file this is the write-up or the this description of the project which you guys just looked at there so that's in the project for uh, content as well and then here's where you're going to turn in the project so let's go ahead and download these you click there you download um, that should show up in your downloads um, on your computer at that point we're going to let me go ahead and open these stems here you can see here's my collection of the stems um, they're mp3 format so they're they're smaller in size but all the stems should show up here there's also three reference tracks that you'll see as well these are stereo tracks so you can see that these are twice the size as these mono tracks here that's because they're stereo left and right channel so it's double so there's references so we can all be referencing the same audio recordings when we mix this and that's kind of what's going to help you guys get things in the ballpark of sounding commercially um, you know, high quality commercial recording is to hold it up against reference mixes. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Pro Tools. Um, that's what I'll use. Um, once again, Pro Tools you should have access to a free 90 day trial. Um, I put everybody who's in the class on the list. Hopefully, you've got information about downloading Pro Tools. If not, um, they are running a free version of Ableton right now for. 90 days so you can use Ableton Live Suite for 90 days for free 
So check that out. That's a really good deal. The suite is amazing, and you can do all this stuff in the suite as well. I might do another video that walks you guys through the setup of the session and importing stems, um, similar to what I do in Pro Tools, but with Ableton. So um, if that's of use to you, uh, let me know. Reach out, guys. Let me know what's going on so we can touch base about all that. All right, so essentially this is project four. Put in my first and last name here, underscore MUS ones. Well, actually, let's do project four, underscore MUS 164. So I named the project um, bit depth and sample rates. Um, we want to double check our stems here. Let me get info on these stems and make sure we're in the right sample rate and bit depth. So our sample rate is 48. So we definitely need to have our sample rate set at 48 kilohertz. And let's do the bit depth of 24 bit. Um, IO settings are going to be stereo mix. So we go ahead and um, start that. Now, location wise, make sure you know where this is going to be saved. If it's an external hard drive or something, you know, do that. But I'm going to set my location to be on my external hard drive under my Pro Tools Projects folder. So we'll go ahead and uh, put that in there. Create the session. Boom, here we are with a fresh window, um, fresh Pro Tools session. There's several ways of importing tracks. Uh, one of the ways you can do this is to go to File, Import Audio and you will browse wherever you downloaded that folder to. It might be in your downloads folder if you're using a Mac or a PC. Um, mine is sitting on my desktop, so I'm gonna go there. It's gonna be the Hendershot Better Man stems. Um, before I actually do this, let's set the tempo to be 112 BPM. So to set the tempo in Pro Tools, you go to this little tempo lane in your ruler you double click on that red diamond and you can manually type in the BPM beats per minute uh, beats per minute okay so once you do that um, we can import these stems now so I'm gonna go to import audio and basically everything inside of that Hendershot better man stems folder I'm gonna select I'm gonna select all those they show up in this clips in current file portion down here and then I'm going to click convert now they have been converted uh, everything should be good as far as the sample rate and then we go ahead and click done um, it's going to place all these files in the audio files folder that we've uh, created within our Pro Tools session folder so that should be fine just click OK or open and then it's going to process the audio for a little bit of time and uh, next up all these stems sh should show up inside of your session now um, this video is gonna be way too long if I take you through everything that I want you to do but let me just go over some of the stuff that I want you to do first of all let's look at our track names um, they're not bad sometimes these track names end up with these long you know titles like Tom 01 R 12 blah 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 all these numbers this sometimes makes things confusing um, so what I like to do when I import some stems like this is to go through here and rename all of these tracks to be something simple um, like this is the guitar lead track oh no I'm sorry it's an acoustic guitar So we got two acoustic guitar tracks. Um, so instead of being acoustic guitar LD 101 blah blah blah, I might just do just acoustic guitar. That's large diaphragm. That's what that LD means. So maybe acoustic guitar low, and then the next one that is the acoustic guitar ribbon mic. Actually, the ribbon mic will be dark. So let's do acoustic guitar low on the ribbon. And then acoustic guitar, large diaphragm will put high. Because that's basically the the, high, the large diaphragm condenser mic is going to pick up a lot of the high frequencies. It's probably a lot brighter than the sound of the acoustic guitar that is with the ribbon microphone. So just so you can hear this, 
the acoustic guitar from the ribbon microphone is much lower sounding, darker, bassier. The acoustic guitar with the large diaphragm is a lot more high frequency. So um, I did that with the two acoustic guitars, the bass beta 12. This is going to be, I think, the bass cabinet. Yep, so that's the uh, microphone on the bass cabinet. Um, so we can do, we can rename that bass instead of to be beta, which is the mic we use, we can just do bass, um, bass amp on that one. Then we're going to use bass DI. We can get rid of all the little numbers here. So I'm just kind of going through and re retitling all these to be um, a little bit more shorter track names. Um, click track, got the click track, drum room. Um, we're just going to call it drum room left. And then drum room right. Um, we have a guitar two dynamic microphone. Um, let's see what that sounds like. All right, so guitar two dynamic. That was down here. Solo this track and listen to that. Okay, so that's just uh, two different guitar tracks. Maybe I leave the dynamic name, you know, the dynamic microphone part of the name. So guitar two dynamic, and then the next one is going to be guitar two ribbon. We'll just keep those. Um, guitar MLD. Not quite sure what that is. Let's listen to guitar MLD. Doesn't look like there's anything in here. There is actually. Okay, cool. I don't know what that is. Um, hmm. Figure that out. That's a uh, guitar MLD. I don't even know what MLD means. Guitar. Yeah, we'll just keep it in the name. We'll just keep MLD there. Just remove all these little numbers. MLD duplicate one. We might not even need that. It just might be a scratch track. So we'll keep that there. Let's keep moving. Guitar M. Okay, so guitar M, now I understand what that means. Guitar M is the other guitar player, the other electric guitar. Um, so let's uh, keep it titled. Let's, instead of calling it guitar M, I'm going to call it guitar, guitar 1. So we have guitar, let's see here. There's the guitar 2 ribbon and dynamic there's basically two guitar players one lead well one electric two two electric guitar players um a guy michael and then and then me as the other guitar player so guess i guess guitar mld was michael lead okay so if we look around here let me make these track waveforms bigger so i can see okay here we go now we can see what's going on so guitar mld Okay, so that's the guitar lead line on the intro. Um, and then this guitar MLD duplicate is a guitar solo at the end. I guess another guitar take. Okay. So, um, yeah, so basically what you're going to be doing here on the initial half of this mix is trying to sort through this. So that's kind of what's going on here. I'm kind of helping you sort through all of this. So um, let's continue with the cleaning up the name schemes. Let's just remove the numbers here. So guitar M, ribbon, let's just keep that as it is. Hi-hat, we'll just make it hi-hat. Kick B, we know that's kick beater. Kick F, get these numbers off here. Kick replacement, so there's a sample replacement we did the, to the kick. So we just call that kick replace. Let's keep going. Kick replace two. Okay, sure. Um, oh, kick replace two. There we go. Um, overhead left. 
So let's clean out these numbers just so it's OH L for overhead left and then OH R overhead right. Um, reference track one, we'll just keep those as the names they are. Then we have the snare bottom. Then we have snare top, floor tom, tom, rack tom, so tom, maybe rack one. And then we have vocal. Okay, yeah, vocal. We have vox three. So that'll be probably a background vocal or something, some kind of vocal harmony. We'll sort that out. So we'll just keep it as Vox 3. Then there's a Vox 4. Let's um, keep it named that. Oh, Vox Harmony R. Okay, I don't know. Um, Vox Harmony Left. Okay, maybe that's a left side harmony. Um, acoustic Guitar High. Okay, that's fine. Acoustic Guitar Low. Bass Amp. Okay, it looks like we got... Oop, we got most everything cleaned up and we removed all these crazy names, all these numbers that are on the names. So that's click track, 112 BPM, maybe we call it that. Okay, good deal. All right, so now at this point, we've renamed everything, we've cleaned up the name schemes. Let's sort our tracks in order. So this is when we start putting the drums on the left side, starting with the kick, snare, hi-hat, etc. And then we'll go bass, then we'll go guitars, rhythm guitars, and lead guitars. Then we'll do any kind of uh, um, vocal stuff after that. So I'm hunting for kick drums. So I have the kick beater and the kick front. We also have kick replace one and two. So that's four kick drum tracks. Let's throw those over on the left side. Okay. After kick comes snare drum. So we're looking for snare. We got snare top and bottom. Okay. We're going to move those after the kick drums. Okay. Um, after snare, we're looking for hi-hat. Where's the hi-hat? After the snares. Okay, after hi-hat, we're going to, going to go through the toms. So for toms, we have, I think, let's see, scanning for toms. Tom, floor tom. Okay, there's tom rack. So I'm going to do rack tom and then floor tom. I think there's just two toms on this kit. So tom rack and tom floor. I'm going to put those after the hi-hat. After the toms, we're going to find the overheads in the room mic. So we have overhead left, overhead right. Then there's a room mic. So here's a drum left and a drum right. So put those after the overheads. So now I have overhead left, overhead right, drum room left, drum room right. I'm going to place those after the floor tom. OK, so that should be all the drums. Now, while I've got the drums all in order here, I'm going to change the colors. So I just, this is shift clicking. You click on that, you hold down shift, you click on that, and that allows you to highlight all of these tracks. And then I can change the color all at the same time. So I'll make the, the drums like a purple color. All right. After drums, I'm going to put the bass in there. So there's our three bass tracks. I'm going to change that color. Um, how about blue? There we go. Okay. Um, after the bass, yeah, acoustic guitars. So these are acoustic guitar tracks there. Okay, so I'm going to make the acoustic guitar orange. Make those a certain color. Boom. And then, oh, I have a click track. I'm going to put the click track way back before the drums. And I'm going to make it some crazy bright color, maybe like blue. There we go. So the click track, we're going to use that later to line stuff up because um, all the drums and everything should be clicked, you know, sequenced out. Um, and that click track is an actual audio recording of a microphone. Uh, I'm sorry, auto audio recording of a metronome. So you can actually see um, where these clicks are in that click track. So you can, yeah, there you go. It's actually audio from a metronome. So that makes it lining makes lining up the grid lines a lot easier when you have something to reference that's visual. Okay, so we've got the acoustic guitar. Um, after the acoustic guitars, we're going to have electric guitars. Oh, here's three reference tracks. I'm going to put those at the very end of my mix and maybe change those colors to be something else, another color here. Uh, references are out of the way. I've got guitar dynamic, guitar two, ribbon. So these are this is a lead guitar right here. 
or just an electric guitar, that's probably my stuff. I don't know, maybe that's Mike, I'm not quite sure. Um, either way, let's make these guitar twos a shade of green. Okay, and then there's the other guitars. Let's see here. So that's the guitar lead stuff. Um, let's make that another shade of green. Okay. Um, then we have the vocal tracks. Looks like we have some vocal harmonies going on here. If I zoom out and look and see what I've got going on. If you guys notice um, on Pro Tools, R and T will zoom in and zoom out. If R and T, the letters R and T, if that doesn't work, what you need to do is right here in this corner, this little A Z thing at the corner of your your mix window or edit window, that needs to be clicked on and highlighted in orange so that the command key keyboard commands work. So R and T should zoom in and out. So as I zoom out, I'm looking at the vocal tracks here. I've got Vox. This looks like the main lead vocal. So Vox, this this track right here, that's just labeled vocals. I'm gonna make that one bright shade of pink. Okay. And then the other vocal tracks here, the harmonies, these other vocal three, vocal four. I'm gonna make these a, another shade, you know, different shades of pink so that I know they're vocal tracks, but um, they're like different shades of pink. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. All righty. So we have a reference tracks after that. All right. So tracks should be in order and color coded at this point. Let's turn down the speakers and let's hear some music and make sure that all these tracks line up with each other. Now, of course, be careful. We've got these reference tracks down here. Just for safety, <laughs> just so we don't get blown out of the water, I'm going to move these reference tracks audio waveforms out of alignment alignment with my tracks because every time I solo or play something loud these things are gonna blast so I'm gonna mute them get them out of the way later when we're trying to figure out where we are with our tones in comparison to other commercial recordings we're gonna pull these things in and start using these to reference but right now we're just kind of trying to organize our session alright so let's listen to it and see if we can if everything's lined up Okay, I think everything's good. Alright, let's listen to our bass. Where's our bass at? I don't hear any bass. We got bass. Okay, so everything's lined up. We're all good with uh, alignment of our tracks just after importing. So uh, the next thing we need to do is figure out where the downbeat is, and we want to set our, our tempo marker. This little red uh, diamond right here needs to be lined up with the downbeat so that time counting starts at the downbeat of the song. Right there's the downbeat. So in Pro Tools what we do is we need to be in slip mode so that we can we're not in grid mode. We grab this little diamond and we slide this bad boy and line it up right with the first downbeat. Alright. Um, cool. Now we need to take our time counter up here. I'm gonna make this bars and beats. Okay, so now this is bars and beats. Um, we still have a time counter. But our song measures and beats and stuff start right on the downbeat of that. Okay, cool. So this is going to be nice later because if we do any editing, we notice that all the metronome clicks and all the drum parts and all the downbeats of measures and stuff start on time. All right, so um, as far as changing the kind of like the subdivision of the of the grid line, what I want us to do is go up to the grid here and let's change it to one bar. Okay, so right here where it says grid, we can change that to one bar. And now if we go into 
grid mode by clicking up here in the left corner, our cursor will only snap into the grid. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to set up markers next. Okay, so setting up markers, let's figure out where our measures and um, different sections of the song start. So this is an intro. Um, I know that much. If I put my cursor right here on that intro and I click where it says markers on this little plus sign right here, I can set my first marker location. So this is intro. Okay. And okay, the intro keeps going. Okay, so right here, where the voice comes in, you see the voice down there, but um, the voice comes in right here. This is a measure, what, measure 17. That's going to be um, our first verse. So verse 1. Okay, so there's another verse. Um, this is going to be essentially bar 25 another marker in there this is gonna be verse two okay and then guess what bar 33 is gonna be the chorus so add another marker this could be chorus one all right okay um, measure 41 this is going to be our interlude um, or solo break or something. There's a guitar solo that I play there. So, solo break. Or guitar, yeah, guitar solo break. We'll do that. Guitar solo break one. Okay, so that lasts about the same amount of time. Measure 41, we're in verse 3. 3, 3. Next. Okay, verse 4 is on measure 57. I'm going to add that. Verse 4. Okay, now guess what? Chorus right here. I don't even need to ask or listen. That's going to be chorus 2. I think there's a double chorus. Let's see. Yep, double chorus. So there's a double chorus. Chorus 2 is going to happen twice. So I'm going to put another... Um, marker right here maybe course 2a or 2b or something because so, it's the second half so it'll be course 2 and then b maybe I call this first one before it course 2a so if i click on this if i double click on this area this little orange yellow marker there it allows me to rename that course 2a all right cool all right sweet so this is the bridge section right here. Um, that's measure 81. We call that bridge. Okay, well, that goes on for a while. So that solo goes on for quite a bit. Um, that's me shredding for y'all. Um, measure 105 is going to be when we come back in with the chorus. So that's going to be measure 105. I put a marker in. It's going to be chorus three out okay and then there is a outro that happens at measure 121 so that's going to be out outro okay cool so at this point we have most of everything pretty well organized our tracks are all nice and color coded and put in order um, we have our references back here we also have um, markers put in our timeline so that we can find all the little sections of the song. Um, the next thing I want us to do is to start routing. So we're going to build, um, we're basically going to add some, some tracks to s route all of the different instrument groups into uh, an auxiliary input, okay? So with this mix, this is gonna be pretty complicated because we now, we have like four different kick drums, we have two snares, we have overheads and room mics for the drums as well, three bass tracks, two acoustic guitar tracks, 
two tracks for each, two or three tracks for each guitar player, and then we have a whole bunch of vocal tracks, and then we're going to have our effect sends. So let's go ahead and make a list here. So I'm counting on my fingers. We need a kick sum. We need a snare sum. We need a drum sum. And if we're going to get fancy, we probably want to have a parallel compression track for the drums. So that's going to be four tracks right there, four stereo aux auxiliary input tracks for the drums. Okay, let's keep going. We have the acoustic guitar, that's five. We have the um, electric guitar, two, which is six. Another electric guitar, seven. Uh, we have the vocal tracks, that's eight. And then we're going to have a submix, that's nine. And let's just start, let's just stop right there. <laughs> Okay, so nine stereo auxiliary input tracks. So I'm gonna use Command Shift N and you it pulls up our new track uh, window here. Uh, I said nine audio tracks. I'm going to choose stereo auxiliary input tracks. Be careful here. You're creating nine stereo auxiliary input tracks, not stereo audio tracks, very important. So you create those, they pop in right here and I'm gonna just start naming these right away. We have our kick sum, we have our snare sum, we have our drum sum, we have our parallel compression for the drums, so I'm gonna use capital I, capital I, sum, parallel, or sorry, parallel comp sum. All right. Now we're on to the bass, bass sum, uh, guitar two sum, guitar M sum, that's the second electric guitar. Um, then we have our vocal sum, and after that we're gonna have our submix. Okay, now after our submix, I want to create a stereo auxiliary, I'm sorry, a stereo master fader track. So once again, we're going to command shift N. It's going to be one stereo master fader, stereo master fader. Okay, cool. Now um, I'm going to start to place these tracks next to their, the tracks that they um, are going to be summing. So kick sum, I'm going to put that right after the three kick drum tracks. My snare sum is going to be after my snare tracks. My drum sum is going to be after my drum overheads. And then my parallel compression sum, I'm going to put that right to the left of my drum sum. Okay, now I have my bass with my bass sum. Guitar two sum should be after the guitar twos. Guitar M sum is going to be after the guitar M's. And then I have my vocal sum, which is going to be to the right of my vocal tracks. My master fader, I'm going to put that all the way at the very far right end before my references. And then my submix, I'm going to put right to the left of my master fader track. And then I'm going to change my submix track to be bright red to help tell it apart. All right, I forgot one thing. I need an acoustic guitar auxiliary input. So I'm going to create another acoustic guitar auxiliary input track. Okay, so one stereo auxiliary input track. That's for the acoustic guitar. I place that to the right of the acoustic guitar and rename that acoustic guitar sum. All right, now uh, the next thing I want to do is create my effects returns. So I'm thinking I'm going to use two different types of reverb and possibly some delay. So I'm going to create three auxiliary input tracks that are stereo. I'm going to place them right after my vocal sum track. So I, by highlighting the track right here and using command shift N and creating three stereo auxiliary input tracks, I can place those to the right of my vocal sum. And I'm going to relabel, relabel these long verb, short verb, and delay. Okay, now I want to tell my sum tracks apart from my effects returns. So I'm going to change the color. 
So we have green for our a lot of our auxiliary input tracks, but I want to make maybe a, a lighter, darker shade of green for my effects returns. So I'm going to do that. And now it's time to do routing. All right, so let's work our way backwards from the very end. Basically, the signal is going to be routed all the way out of the master fader. That's kind of the very end of the mix. Everything comes through the master fader. Um, Pre-master fader is the submix. So all these tracks, as they are, the outputs are essentially the default outputs of your DAW, which uh, hopefully is the left and right of your interface or whatever that's called. Okay, so the submix track should have that set. Everything else is going to eventually change. So I'm going to work my way backwards. So my submix goes out through the master fader, out of the speakers. But its input needs to be fed by a bus. I'm going to create what's called a um, mix bus. So I go to the input of this track, go to bus, bus 1 and 2. I'm going to rename that to be uh, sub mix. Or no, no, I'm sorry, mix bus. Mix bus. This is the main output bus. So now that I've created the mix bus, I need to feed everything into this. So basically I'm going to feed all of the uh, instrument sums. All these sum tracks are going to feed into the uh, mix bus as well as the effects uh, return tracks. So I'm going to go through here and while holding down command or control on a PC, I'm going to select all of my sum tracks and all of my re uh, effects return tracks. So guitars, acoustic guitars, the bass, the drum sum, yeah, the drum sum, the drum sum, the bass sum, the acoustic guitar sum, the electric guitar sums, the vocal sum, the long, short, and delay. There we go. Cool. Now in Pro Tools, I can hold down Option Shift and then go to one of their outputs and change that to be the mix bus. And that happens uh, globally to all of the tracks that were selected. Okay, so all of my my uh, stereo auxiliary input tracks that are being used as sums for the groups of instruments are gonna be fed into the submix. Now, while I've got all these uh, selected here, I probably wanna go ahead and use the, um, well, I, I wanna, uh, solo save these. So any auxiliary input track that we're using for routing for like sums or um, effects return tracks, these stereo auxiliary tracks need to be um, solo safe. So I'm going to solo safe these by holding down command and clicking on the S's on my submix, my delay and reverbs, my vocal sum, my guitar sums, all my guitar sums, my bass sum, my drum sum, my parallel compression sum, and all the way into my snare sum and my kick sum. All the auxiliary input tracks need to be solo safe. Okay, now with that done, let's keep working through our routing. So as I go from right to left, I have the vox, the vocal sum here which is fed into the um, mix bus, okay? But it needs to be fed from something. So all of my vocal tracks, all of these vocal tracks right here, I selected all of these, and I'm going to Option Shift and then change their output to be the next available stereo bus, which is mix a bus three and four stereo. Okay, that should happen all these simultaneously. I'm going to right click on this and rename that to be the Vox Bus. Excellent. So the Vox Bus feeds into the Vox Sum Track, but that means I need to set the Vox Sum Track's input to be the Vox Bus. All right, now that's feed it, fed from here to there. That goes from here into the input of my submix and then out of the speakers. So I'm going to basically continue this whole process. Here is the guitar M 
instruments here. I'm going to set their outputs to be the next available bus, which I will rename to be guitar M bus. That is fed into the guitar M sum track. So I set that input to be guitar M bus, and then that's complete. All right, go to guitar two. Select my two guitar two tracks, set their outputs to be the next available stereo bus, relabel that, rename that to be guitar two bus, set the input of the guitar two sum to be the guitar two bus. Keep going. Here's the acoustic guitars. Their outputs should be set to the next available stereo bus, bus 9 and 10. Relabel that. Um, guitar or acoustic guitar, so AC guitar bus. All right, cool. Feeding that into the inputs here. Um, boom, there's that. Uh, bases, same deal. Set their outputs to be the next stereo bus, bus 11 and 12. Rename that bass bus. Okay, and then set the input of the bass bus, bass sum track to be bass bus. Okay, that's fed in there. Now we have our drums. So, uh, let's see here. Hi-hats, let's go back to the beginning. Our kick drums are gonna be, are gonna be fed into the kick sum, and then the kick sum is gonna be fed into the drum sum. So let's do this first. I'm gonna select all three of my kick tracks. Option, shift. Set their outputs to be the next stereo bus bus 13 and 14. I'm going to re... oopsie. Shit. Uh, oops. Uh, yeah, bus 13 and 14. I'm going to rename that bus 13 and 14 to be kick... kick bus. All right. Now, all these kick tracks need to be fed into the kick sum, so I'm going to set the input of the kick sum to be the kick bus. Now that signal needs to be fed into the drum sum. So the output of the kick sum needs to be fed into the input of the drum sum. So it can keep going. So the output of the kick sum needs to be the okay, hold on. To the drum sum. So we don't have a drum bus yet. Okay, so that's what needs to happen here. On the kick sum track. We're going to choose the next available output. We're going to call that the drum sum. Or the drum bus. Yeah, because this is a bus. All right, cool. There's that. Um, the drum bus needs to be sent into the drum sum. So I'm going to go over here now while I'm here on the drum sum and set the input to be the, the drum bus. So that the signal goes from the kick sum into the drum sum, and then that goes to the rest of the submix. So, uh, same thing here with the snares. Snare, top and bottom. I'm going to make those outputs the next available bus. Rename that to be the uh, snare bus. Snare bus goes into the snare sum input. Then the snare sum output needs to be set to the drum bus. Alright, now here we are with the hi-hats and the toms and all that other stuff. All this other stuff, hi-hats, toms, overheads, rooms, those are all going to be sent to the drum sum. So with these selected, I'm going to option shift, go to their outputs and set that to be the drum bus. Alright, cool. Now for this parallel compression sum, Parallel compression needs to be fed. I'm going to have that feed into the drum sum. So the parallel compression track's output should be the drum bus. Now, with parallel compression, what's going on here eventually is I'm going to feed probably the drum overheads, maybe the kick a little bit. I don't know. Probably I'll just I'm going to for now I'm going to I'm going to use the drum overheads. The drum overheads are going to be fed through a send into the parallel compression sum. So first of all, let's go to the parallel compression sum track. Let's set its input to be bus 19 and 20. And I'm going to rename that to be the um, parallel 
capital I, capital I, bus. All right, so now instead of using the outputs, I'm going to use the sends on the overhead, left, right, and drum tracks. So select the overhead, left and right, drum room, left and right tracks, hold down Option Shift, and go to the first send category. Actually, let's go to the last send category. So this is the sends area. These are the send slots. I'm going to choose the bottom one. And I'm going to set the send to come from and use the parallel bus. So now what happens is I can eventually turn up the amount of overhead drums and room that is fed into this track. And that's mixed in parallel into the drum sum. So it's like more room ambiance and, and really heavily compressed overheads. It'll bring up a, a sound that we might use to build intensity through the song. So that's what that's going to be for. Okay, so at this point, all the routing should be sent and should be working well. So if I hit play here, I should hear audio and see audio through all of my channels. I do. I've got my submix, my master output, everything's cooking. I got signal. My kick sum is really loud, so I'm going to turn that down. But anyway, um, cool. Routing is all set up. That's um, what I want you guys to kind of do this first time around. Um, as I go a little bit deeper here, um, we're going to set up our sends to feed into and utilize our uh, effects return tracks. Okay, so let's go over here and do that now. So the delay track needs an input. The input's going to come from a bus. I also am starting to run out of buses, which can be an issue. So let's solve the bus issue. We need more buses. In Pro Tools, to create more buses, when we do a large mix like this with tons of tracks and we use tons of buses up, we need to create some more. So I'm going to go into Setup, go to I.O., and under the tab that says Bus, I'm going to, let's see here. I'm going to choose new path. I'm going to create, how about, four more stereo buses. So four stereo buses. I, I hit create. And under here, you can see I've just added to this list of buses, many of which have been renamed. Um, more buses. OK, cool. So that's how you get more buses. Another thing you might need more uh, down the road is more insert slots. Like if you start stacking plugins on all these slots and you run out, you can right click here on the name plate of the inserts and you can choose to have inserts A through E and then inserts F through J. So you can have way more inserts. So as you have more sends or inserts, the need for those, you can create and add more. So I don't need those right now, but I do need the more buses. So anyway, under the delay, on the input of the delay effects return, I'm going to go to bus and choose the next available bus, bus 21, 22. I'm going to rename this delay bus. Okay. I'm going to go to the short verb, the input of the short verb. I'm going to choose the next available bus, rename that short bus. And then on the long verb, I'm going to use the next available stereo bus, bus one and two, rename that the long bus. All right, cool. So at this point, I need to go across all of my tracks and create sends for the long verb, short verb, and delay. All right, so the send slots are this second row here, not the inserts, but the sends. And I want every single one of these tracks everywhere, except for the click track, to have um, a send slot for the long verb. So to do that, I'm going to click on my vocal sum. It's the very last audio track or the uh, my very last sum track in all the instruments, everything that's not a effects 
return track from here on all the way to the beginning of my session with the kick beater I've selected all of those tracks while holding down option shift I'm going to go to the first sends category and I'm going to choose the bus labeled short bus okay that happens across all the sends I'm going to go to the next available send slot and I'm going to choose the bus labeled long bus and then on the third slot I'm going to choose the bus labeled delay bus now across all of my tracks everywhere both some tracks and individual instrument tracks I have a routing send that I can basically send to the short reverb or the long reverb they're a little bit out of order here. I might put my short reverb in front of my long reverb. Short, long, delay. Short, long, delay. But I can expose these faders, which allow me to mix in reverb individually uh, each track, as well as pan the reverb in either direction. I can do all that um, from exposing these send slots here, these little send um, buses. If you hold down Command and click on the left corner, it displays this little fader view and that's how I can add reverb and delay to individual tracks so I can show and hide those by clicking on the left portion with the command alright so the next up thing to do is to add a reverb that is reminiscent of a short bright some sort of small space reverb um, go into the plugins you should search for reverbs I mean, I have a lot of plugins on my machine at home, so you're not going to see a lot of these. You might see D verb or some basic R verb or something like that, depending on what your plugins are. But you're going to choose some sort of reverb plugin that is um, that has a you know maybe a preset of a small room or some small plate. So you might go for something that's like uh, that's I don't know maybe bright short plate or something. Um, and then when you do a reverb on your long verb, you might go and find a, a, a reverb plugin that's something that's more of a long haul verb. So I can go to my preset category here and do some sort of like large church or large room, medium haul, something that's got a big long reverb trail to it. Delay, whatever delays you have, find some sort of delay that sounds cool. Um, I'm not even sure which comes with the basic Pro Tools. Maybe Mod Delay 2 is the one that comes with it. So, yeah, you might choose a default slapback kind of thing. This is like a rock band, country rock band. So slapback delay is kind of a, you know, a sound that's used in, you know, country and rock and roll and rockabilly kind of stuff. So some sort of slapback delay. I don't know. We'll have to dial these in and listen and see which one sounds good, but slapback delay, we go with that as a default. Um, and then when I send like something like the vocal track, say I solo my vocal track, find a part of the song where the singer's singing, like this right here. I, I can solo that. I can go over to my Just short verb and dial it up, which is going to be accessible from this, holding down command. So there's the short verb. Here's the long verb tone. Then there's the, the delay. So you kind of get that color, reverb color that you want. Mute that, click track. So that's how you use your this uh, these effects returns. You set up these auxiliary input stereo tracks. You put a verb or delay or whatever you're using on these so you have different sound characteristics of different tones of reverb. And then you can apply reverb to individual instruments as you see fit by pulling out the faders on these sends, which can be exposed by, you know, exposed or hidden by command clicking on that left edge of it. Um, cool. So another thing I might do on that long verb to make it darker 
is I might put that dverb or that reverb uh, plugin on the second slot, and then before it use some sort of EQ. So I'm gonna grab the EQ7 because that's what everybody has, and I'm gonna filter out the dark, the brightness of that reverb. So I'm gonna solo this vocal track again. And uh, let me just focus here on the long verb. So I get rid of that short verb. I want to make that a little bit darker. So I'm going to put a high, low pass filter on to roll off some of the the, uh, the high frequencies. Now it's really dark. So what happens is this EQ ha that has a low pass filter is filtering off the high frequencies of the voice before they hit the D verb, thus making it darker. You could also do it after, too. Let's see what that sounds like. I remember sitting on that patio. Just Actually, I think I, I think it's it's better if you put it post reverb. So the low pass filter can darken up a bright sounding long reverb. I remember sitting on that patio. There you go. Just surprised that we survived the night before. With all those bottles and those fist fights and those women mad. So there you go. All right, there's some reverb um, use right there. Now, at this point, um, what you're going to do is you're going to go through and figure out what is going on with your mix. So we've got kick, beater, kick front, kick replacement, kick replacement. All right, so we've got like a big boomy kick beater, kind of a big boomy that. So this was recorded in the dance hall studio the dance studio next to the um, control room with all the curtains drawn so it sounds super huge like super big drums so depending on what you want out of the drums we might solo all the kick drums and try to dial in the kick drum tone so first of all this is our raw kick drum sound right here it's really very ringy so I'm going to turn that down a little bit really crazy about the kick beater sound a lot of bleed in there but anyway let's bring up the kick replace there we go so you might dial your kick in like that and get a little bit more um, less of the room whatever you're liking for your kick drum you might do something like that Less uh, mics and more of sample replacement because I wasn't really happy with it, so therefore I sample replace it. Okay, snare drum. We've got kick or the snare bottom, which is all the snare sound. Then the top. Okay, not bad. Um, balance those two things to taste. However much sizzle you want. Kind of start with the top and bring in the sizzle on the side. Okay, and let's listen to those two things together. Yeah, whatever tone you like, you got that going on. Um, what, one other thing I forgot to do here, um, let's create some groups. This is a nice tool to have. So down here at the bottom corner of your window, where you see that little arrow that pops up right there, you can expand the view of the groups. Now this happens both on your edit and your mix window. So if you're looking at your mix edit window down here, um, the left side you can expose or hide this little tiny arrow right there. You can expose or hide the group view so what we're gonna do is create groups for all these instruments so I'm gonna select everything from the the drum group so this is not including the drum sum I'm gonna let's see here no let's not include this also let's not include the all right yep 
I'm going to go from everything from the drum rooms to the kick drum. So I'm including the snare sum and the kick sum. Now Command G will create a new group with all these tracks that I've selected. So this is going to be called the drum group. All right. I'm going to do the same thing with my bass. I'm going to select only my three bass audio tracks. Command G, and that's going to be the bass group. All right. Then we have the acoustic guitar. Those two. Command G, acoustic guitar. And then uh, guitar two. Select those two. Command G, guitar two. All right. Then I have guitar M. Select those three. Oopsie. Guitar G, or Command G. That's our guitar M. Is that that's that group is called because these are called the guitar M's. Then we have the voice stuff. So all three, five vocal tracks. Command G, and this is the Vox group. All right. So what the deal is, we have these groups that we've created down here, and they show up in the group window. Now what happens is, if I want to move all of the faders at once, or solo all the drum tracks at once, the best way to do that is to select and highlight the drum group and then when you click on one of the drum tracks they're all selected when you move the faders they all move together okay so you want to unselect that if you want to do things individually whatever but you can do things globally to all of the groups the, the instruments in the groups at once so it's great once you balance all your drums dynamically and get all your mixing your balance of all these instruments done and you need just to turn the drums down overall you could select the drum group and you can kind of move all the faders at once. So that's why it's nice to have groups. You can also also do this. This is another reason it's nice to have groups. The drum track group right here, you can select that and uh, right click on it and choose to hide tracks and group. So boom, your mix window just got a lot easier to navigate because say you're done mixing your drums. You're over that. You're moving on to these other instruments. You don't need to see all the drums. Your session window is a lot easier to navigate because it's missing a bunch of tracks. Easy enough to re-show those or unhide those. You right-click on that drum group, go to show tracks and group, and then the, the drums are back. So, um, yeah, I'll stop there for today. At this point, what I want you guys to do is mix the drums. We've gone over this. You guys know how to use EQ. You know how to use compression. I'll do another video and kind of walk you through what I did and um, um, probably drop that maybe Wednesday or next week. But, uh, yeah, that's going to be what I want you guys to kind of get through this first uh, this first day here is set your session up with all of the things we did. And then we will jump back in here and continue mixing. All right. Um, so I will – there I am. I'll see you guys soon. Um, happy mixing. Uh, reach out if you have any issues or questions, and we will see you on the next video.